Thomas and the Big Big Bridge It was a special day for the railway on the island of Sodor. Sir Topham Hatt had a special announcement. We are to launch a new rail line through the mountains of Sodor. Today we open the Big Big Bridge. Everyone cheered. It was wonderful news. The mountains were beautiful. The people of Sodor couldn't wait to visit them. They wanted to see the big, big bridge. It had high towers that are so high, the tops touched the sky. And the valley beneath was so deep that when you are on the big, big bridge, you can barely see the ground. Thomas was excited about the new rail line. This really is a special day. James frowned. I don't want to go to the mountains. It's windy up there. Very, very windy. James didn't like the wind. He didn't even like rain or snow or hail either. James, you're a medium-sized red mixed traffic engine. You shouldn't be afraid of a little wind. But James was afraid, and that made Thomas a bit afraid too. Thomas, James, and Gordon, collect your coaches, please. It's time for your first trip to the mountains. Yes, yes sir. sir. Edward, Emily, and Henry were upset. They want to take a trip to the mountains themselves. Percy was glad he didn't have to go to the mountains with Thomas and Gordon. He was afraid to cross the big, big bridge. I would take care on the new rail line if I were you. It might be very, very high up in the mountains. There's nothing to be afraid of. It will be easy to cross the big, big bridge. Thomas and James puffed to Napford Station. Gordon was already there. His coaches were full of passengers. Annie and Clarabelle were soon coupled up to Thomas, and the passengers boarded them. I can't wait for our first trip to the mountains, Clarabelle. Aren't you? Yes, Annie. Yes, I am. All aboard! Sir Topham had turned to the crowd and waved his top hat. Express leading the way to the mountains, coming through! In a burst of steam, Gordon was off. The three trains were soon rolling through the countryside in a long line. Gordon took the lead. Behind him chugged James. Then came Thomas. All along the way, people came out of their houses and cheered when they saw the trains go by. At the foot of the mountain, James slowed to a crawl. Those mountains are much too high. I can't go. I know how Candace is afraid of heights. Don't be silly, James. I'll be right here behind you. But James didn't budge. He was very nervous, and that made Thomas nervous, too. He gently pushed James. Come on! We have to go!
The new tracks were smooth and shiny, but James barely moved along them. The truth was, James didn't want to reach the top of the mountain, because then he would have to cross the big, big bridge. If, if Percy, Percy and James, James are afraid, maybe I should, I should be afraid, afraid too. The tracks grew steep as Thomas and James puffed up the mountain. They could barely keep up with Gordon. The big blue express engine rushed ahead. He was a strong engine. The steep tracks didn't tire him at all. Gordon! Wait for us! But Gordon didn't hear James. He climbed higher and higher until he was out of sight. I don't think I can make it! The mountain is too steep! Keep going, James! We can't let a little mountain stop us! But Thomas was having trouble chucking up the mountain too. And he was beginning to worry about crossing the big, big bridge. Finally, Thomas and James arrived at the top of the mountain. There it was. The big, big bridge. And it was high. It was windy up there, too. Very windy. I'm not going! But we have to cross. Our passengers want to see the mountains on the other side. When are we gonna get moving? Yes, I can't take any more slow holdups. Annie and Clarabelle were so excited that Thomas had trouble keeping them in line. Thomas searched the tracks ahead. Gordon was nowhere to be seen. He had already crossed the big, big bridge and rolled into the mountains beyond. Thomas and James were left alone. I'll go first, James. Then you can follow me. Okay. But if the wind blows, close your eyes. That way you won't see anything scary. Thomas began to cross the bridge. He looked up. He could see cottony clouds touching the top of the bridge. Nervously, he looked down. But the bridge was so high, he couldn't see the ground. Suddenly, a gust of wind shook the bridge. This scared Thomas. He closed his eyes tightly, that he couldn't see where he was going. Thomas came to a sudden stop. He opened one eye for a quick peek. Oh no! Thomas's wheels were off the track. Are you alright, Thomas? I'm stuck. I couldn't see where I was going, and my wheels have jumped the track. Just then, Gordon returned. He was shocked when he saw Thomas stuck in the middle of the bridge. James, go get help from the search and rescue center. Relieved, James backed down the mountain to find help. Thomas kept his eyes closed. He was too afraid to look. But inside Annie and Clarabelle, the passengers enjoyed the wonderful view. Finally, Thomas heard the whirl of rotors. Harold the helicopter was here to rescue him. Slowly, Thomas opened his eyes. 
he looked at the blue sky above the green mountains all around. Wow! What a lovely view! I was silly to shut my eyes. I almost missed everything! Hitch the rope to your buffer and hold on, Thomas! In no time at all, Harold had lifted Thomas back onto the tracks. Thomas backed up to where James was waiting. Come on, James! The view is spectacular! I should never have been afraid! And neither should you! With that, Thomas turned and chugged happily across the big, big bridge. James watched in wonder. If Thomas is not afraid, maybe I shouldn't be afraid either. Slowly, James made his way across the bridge too. Soon, Thomas and James arrived at the mountain station. The mountains were really lovely. Everyone was happy to have seen them. But Thomas was the happiest one of all. He was proud that he had crossed the big, big bridge. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.